Hi everyone, my name is TTJ Kebs Yorichi. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today our discussion on ordinary differential equations will be the continuation of first order ordinary differential equations and our attention will be on the non-exact differential equations. So, we learn that if we uh, uh, an equation is in this form and we find the partial differentiation of m with respect to y and it is equal to the partial differentiation of n with respect to x we call that equation exact exact differential equation and when we find partial differentiation of m with respect to y okay and it is not equal to the partial differentiation of n with respect to x we call that equation non-exact non-exact I have a video covering the exact one. Please check it out on YouTube. Today, before the video will end, we will learn how to find solution to the non-exact ones. So this will be a very interesting engagement. I indulge you to watch the video till the end. So after we determine that our first order ordinary differential equation is non-exact, how do we solve that? We need to find an integrating factor. Then we'll multiply the integrating factor to the non-exact equation. Then bam, it will become exact. Then we'll use the steps in solving the exact to solve it. What is that integrating factor? The integrating factor u of x is giving us e exponent, the integral of p of x dx. What is this p of x? The p of x is just equal to this partial differentiation with respect to m minus the partial differentiation with respect to n all over n all over n so this will be our p of s so after we get p of s we start to and find the integrating factor then we we'll multiply the integrating factor through the non-exact equation then it will become exact then we we follow the procedure in solving the exact to solve it. So I will take example question so that you will get the concepts. So let's solve the first order differential equation 3xy plus y squared dx plus x squared plus xy dy equal to zero. So we are going to solve this. So the first thing you need to do is you determine whether it is exact or non-exact. So what we do, we let our m of x okay to be equal to this 3xy plus y squared and our n of x y n of x y should be equal to the x squared plus x y now what we will find the partial differentiation of m with respect to y so that will be equal to so now when we are doing partial differentiation of m with respect to y x will be kept constant i hope you know that so when we do that this will be 3x plus our uh, 2y because this is linear the differentiation of a linear is just the coefficient of the variable then you know how to differentiate you drop this and subtract one from the exponent then we find the partial differentiation of n with respect to x y will be kept constant so what do we get? We get 2x plus y. I hope you get that. So you can see that our m, the partial differentiation of m with respect to y is not equal to the partial differentiation of m with respect to x. Okay? So this is non-exact. Non-exact. So immediately you, you, you were able to determine that it's non-exact, you need to find the integrating factor. And remember we said the integrating factor u of x is giving us e exponent the integral of p of x dx. Now what is our p of x? That's what we need to find. So we need to find our integrating factor. And we say our integrating factor is giving us e exponent the integral of p of x dx. Now what is our p of x? The p of x is simply the partial differentiation of m with respect to y. Okay? 
minus the partial differentiation of n with respect to x all over n. Someone can do partial differentiation of n with respect to x minus that all over n is the same thing. So we find that we find our p of x. What's the partial differentiation of n with respect to y? That's 3x plus 2y minus the partial differentiation of n with respect to x is 2x plus y. All over our n. What is our n? The n is x squared plus xy. So x squared plus xy. We we'll find p of x. So we have 3x plus 2y minus 2x minus y. We distribute the negative all over x squared plus xy. Now what we get? 3x minus 2x will be x. Then 2y minus y will be plus y all over x squared plus xy. Now we can we can factor out x here. So what we have we, have, we can have x plus y all over x out, then x plus y. So you see that this will divide that. So in our share, our p of x will be just one over the x. Now we'll find our p of x. We start to see it here to get our integrating factor. So now we are going to find our integrating factor since we know our p of s. So our u of s will just be equal to e, the integral of 1 over x dx. What's the integral of 1 over x? It's nothing but lean x. Anytime the lean meet the exponential function, you know the answer is just x, what is in front of it. So our integrating factor u of s is x. What next? We multiply this integrating factor through our non-exact differential equation, then it will become exact. So that was the next thing we do. So after we found integrating factor u of x to be x, we multiply it through. So we get x bracket 3xy plus y squared dx plus x bracket x squared plus x y dy equal to zero. You know we'll multiply x by zero is still zero. So we'll multiply. What we'll get three x square y plus x y square dx. I hope you get that. X will multiply this and multiply that. Then plus x cube. X times x square will be x cube plus x square y dy equal to zero. But after we multiply two, check whether it become exact. Check whether it become exact. So now our m of x y will be equal to three will be equal to three x square y plus x y square. And our m of x y, okay? will be equal to x cubed plus x squared y. Now we find the partial differentiation of m with respect to y. What would that give us? So, you know, the x will be kept constant. So the, this will be 3x squared plus 2xy. I hope you get that. I hope you get that. Then, we find the partial differentiation of n with respect to x. Y will be kept constant. We get 3x squared plus 2xy. So you can see that we are equal now. So now our partial differentiation of m with respect to x with m with respect to y is equal to the partial differentiation of n with respect to x. Look at it, all is equal to 3x squared plus 2xy. So our differential equation is now exact. So we pick this differential equation, the exact differential equation, and follow the steps in solving the exact. So we have succeeded in making our non-exact equation exact. So now we follow the process. So you remember, please, 
If you have problem in solving the exact, check my videos on YouTube, how to solve the exact differential equations. So now let's, we say when it is exact, we assume that the general equation, the general solution to this differential equation will be a function of x and y. So it will be equal to the integral of one of these. So I'm picking this. You can pick that. It's the same. So you have 3x square y plus xy square. Okay? The x. I pick this. So we are going to do direct integration of this with respect to x. So y will be kept constant. So what do we have here? We have, remember integration rule, we add 1 to this and divide by the result. So we have x squared y plus half x squared y squared. Then plus our arbitrary constant of y. Since we are doing a direct integration with respect to x. So this becomes our function, our, the general solution to the differential equation. Now what next? After we need to get our arbitrary constant. So we say that we differentiate this function. So let's differentiate. So f prime of xy, please the differentiation is with respect to y, will be equal to x cube. So we differentiate it to x cube. Then we differentiate this. See, the two will multiply this half. That will become one. So we'll be left with x square y plus h prime of y. So what means? We equate the differential to the other side that we didn't integrate. So we say that our x squared plus x square y plus h prime of y should be equal to x squared plus x square y. This one. I hope you get that. Immediately you equate the two. Everything concerning x must vanish. If you remember that. So now, let me make h prime the subject. So our h prime of y will be equal to x cube minus this x cube, then plus x square y minus x square y. I hope you get that. So our h prime of y would be nothing but zero. This is zero, that's zero. So now what, how do we get h prime of y? We integrate. So the integral of h prime of y will be equal to what? The constant of integration. So when we integrate this, you know anytime we integrate the differential of a function, we get a function. So our h of y is c, is a constant. So we just substitute this constant here. Then we get our general solution. Okay, so we find our arbitrary constant of y to be c. So we just substitute. So our general solution the differential equation will be x cubed y plus half x square y square then plus our constant. Plus our constant. So if we are given any boundary conditions, we substitute to get our particular solution. I hope you get that. I'll solve one more question so that we are abreast with the concept. So we we'll solve the second question. We solve it. So 3e exponent xy plus x ds plus e exponent x dy equal to 0 at y of 0 equal to 1. So we are going to get a particular solution to this differential equation. So we need to determine whether it is exact or non-exact before we start solving. So our m of xy will equal to this. That's 3e exponent xy plus x. Then our n of xy is equal to e exponent x. So we find the partial differentiation of m with respect to y. What are we getting? So the x will be kept constant. So the partial, the partial differentiation of this will just be 3 e exponent x. Remember this is x, is constant. So, the, so the differentiation of the constant here x is constant, so we differentiate it, we can zero. Now we we'll find a partial differentiation of n with respect to x. Okay? So how do we differentiate exponential functions? We differentiate the exponent and use it to multiply the function. So we we'll differentiate x is 1. We 
we use to multiply with this thing. So you can realize that our partial differentiation with respect to y, okay, our partial differentiation of m with respect to y is not equal to our partial differentiation of m with respect to x. So it is non-exact, non-exact. So we need to make it exact. We need to make it exact. How do we make it exact? We find the integrating factor and multiply it to. And we say that the integrating factor u of x is equal to e exponent, the integral of p of x ds. What's our p of x? So we find our p of x. We say that p of x will be equal to the partial differentiation of m with respect to y minus the partial differentiation of n with respect to x okay all over n all over n so our p of x will be equal to what's our partial differentiation of m with respect to y that's 3 e exponent x and our partial differentiation with respect of n with respect to x is e exponent x all over n of x our n of x is here that's e exponent x so all over e exponent x so our p of x will be equal to 3 e exponent x minus e exponent x remember there is one here so that will be 2 e exponent x all over e exponent x so this can divide that our p of x is equal to 2 so we find the integrating factor our u of x now will be equal to e exponent the integral of 2 dx and remember integration of a constant is the attachment of the variable to so that will be 2x so our integrating factor u of x is e exponent 2x now we'll multiply the integrating factor through the non-exact differential equation then it will become exact so let's multiply our integrating factor through the non-exact system. So we have e exponent 2x times 3e exponent xy plus x dx then plus e exponent 2x times e exponent x dx equal to 0. So we distribute this to multiply this. Remember indices. When two bases when the uh, two indices are multiplying with the same base, we just add the exponent. So we add this 2x to x, we get 3x. So we get 3e exponent 3xy plus x e exponent 2x dx plus this will also be e exponent 3x dy equal to 0. The bases are the same, so I added the exponent. 2x plus x is 3x. Now we have multiplied to, you have to check whether your non-exact has become exact. So we check. So our m of xy is now equal to 3e exponent 3xy plus x e exponent 2x. And our n of xy is e exponent 3x. So now we differentiate m partial differentiation of m with respect to y. So what do we get? Remember the x will be kept on. So the whole of this is constant. So when we differentiate this, it will just be the coefficient. So the coefficient is this. Now when we differentiate this, the whole of this is constant. So it will become zero. And the partial differentiation of n with respect to x will be equal to, remember how we differentiate exponential functions. We differentiate the exponent and use it to multiply the function. So when we differentiate 3x, we get 3 times the function. So if we can see that they are now equal. So now our m of our partial differentiation of m with respect to y is equal to the partial differentiation of m with respect to x, all equal to the 3e exponent 3x. So now our non-exact system has become exact. So we follow the procedure to solve the exact to get a general solution. Then we start to see the necessary boundary conditions to get a particular solution. So 
Our non-exact differential equation is not exact. It's not exact. So we solve that. So we guess that the function or the general solution to this differential equation is a, a function f depending on x and y and to be equal to you can integrate this or integrate that. I want to integrate this. The first one integrated this. So I want to integrate this one so that you will get a concept. So we have the integral of e exponent 3x dy. So how do we integrate that? So when we integrate this, remember there is no y here. So the whole of this is constant. So we just get e exponent 3x. Yeah, that is the y. Then plus our arbitrary constant of x since we are integrating with respect to the y. What next? We differentiate this function with respect to x. So what do we get? We we'll get f prime of x y. So partial differentiation with respect to x. So our y will be kept constant. So there is x here. We differentiate this. We just differentiate the exponent and use it to multiply the function. Y then plus our h prime of x. What next? We equate this side of the uh, of the of the differential, the derivative. We equate this side to this side of our uh, the exact system. So we can say that our three e exponent three x y plus h prime of x, this one is equal to this. Is equal to e exponent three x y plus s e exponent two x. So 3e exponent 3xy plus e exponent 2x. So I said after we equate everything concerning y must vanish. If it is not, that means you do not follow the right process in solving it. So let's make h prime the subject. So our h prime of x will be equal to 3 exponent 3e exponent 3xy minus 3e exponent 3xy then plus our e exponent plus x please there is x here there is x here so let's write it well x e exponent 2x so plus x e exponent 2x so what we do see this is the whole of this result so what is left we have h prime of x will be equal to x e exponent to x. So we, we need h of x, not h prime of x. So we integrate both sides. We integrate both sides. So we have the integral of h prime of x is equal to the integral of x e exponent to x dx. So remember, when we integrate the differentiation of a function, the answer is nothing but a function. It will be equal to the integral of x e exponent 2x. Yes. Now the problem is how do we integrate this? Check. When you try to integrate this by substitution, see, when you differentiate 2x, you get a constant. The x is still there. So you rather use integration by parts to integrate this. So we'll pull this out and integrate by parts. Then after that, we'll get our h of x and substitute it into our general solution. This. So remember I said we have to integrate this using integrating integration by parts. So remember integration by parts, we say that the integral of uv prime will be equal to uv minus the integral of v u prime. I know you will be abreast with this by now. So what is our u? What is our, our u is just the x. And our v prime, this one, is an e exponent to x. Now we need the differential of u is here. We need it. So we differentiate this. So u prime. All differentiate x is 1. Now we need v. 
we have V prime here. To get V, we integrate. So when we integrate this, we get V. The integral of this, remember the integration of exponential functions. We just integrate, uh, differentiate the exponent and use it to divide the function. So I have E exponent 2x over 2. Now we start to two. So the integral of what's our u? Our u is x. What's our v prime? Our v prime is, is e exponent 2x. Okay? This dx will be equal to uv. u is x. Our v is this. So we can write this as half e exponent 2x. I hope you get that. Then minus the integral of v u prime. What's our v? Our v is this. And what's our u prime? Our u prime is 1. So we just have e exponent 2x. I hope you get that. That's half e exponent 2x over 2 dx. That's our u prime is 1. 1 times this e exponent 2x over 2 will be the same thing. So now let's polish this. So this will be equal to, we can get half x, e exponent 2x. This I'm taking my time so that you get the understanding of it. Now this is half, we can bring it up so we can have half the integral of e exponent 2x dx. Now what are we having? The integral of x, e exponent 2x dx will be equal to half x e exponent 2x minus half. Now how do we integrate this? Remember, we will just differentiate the exponent easy to divide. So we have e exponent 2x over 2. Then plus our constant of integration. So we just polish this to get the integral of this. So let's polish that to get the integration of this. So we have half x e exponent 2x okay this is half one half multiply half we get one fourth so we have one fourth e exponent 2x that's our c remember this is nothing but the arbitrary constant of the x so now we substitute that arbitrary constant into this to get our general solution so what is the solution that we have f of x y is equal to e exponent 3xy plus h of x. So in place of h of x, we put the whole of that. So our function x, f of xy will be equal to e exponent 3xy plus half x e exponent 2x minus one fourth e exponent 2x plus constant. So this is our general solution to the non-exact system. Now, we're given some boundary conditions. We substitute that boundary conditions to get our specific solution. So what are we finding? Is it y of zero is equal to one? That means our s is one and our y is zero. So we find f of zero, one. We substitute that equation to zero to get our uh, specific solution. So in place of x, we put 0, in place of y, we put 1. To get e exponent 3 times 0 times 1 plus half e exponent 0, s is 0, times e exponent 2 times 0 minus 1 fourth e exponent 2 times 0 plus c. So what are we having? C. E exponent 3 times 0 is 0, e exponent 0 is 1, so this will be 1. I hope you get that. Then the whole of that will be zero since zero is multiplied. Minus then here, here two times zero is zero. Here exponent zero is one. So we we'll get minus half minus one fourth, sorry, plus c. So what do we have? One minus one fourth. What do we get? So that will be three fourths. Let's do it so that people will get a concept. So we have 1 minus 1 over 4. The LCM is 4. That will be 4 minus 1. That will be 3 4. So 3 4 plus C. Now, how do we get a C? We just transpose this. We equate 
this to zero. We just transpose this to this to get the C. So our C will be equal to negative 3, 4. So we substitute the C here to get our, our uh, specific solution or particular solution. So our F of X, Y in conclusion will be equal to E exponent 3 X, Y plus half X E exponent 2 X minus 1 fourth E exponent 2 X then our C is what? Negative 3, 4. Then this becomes our specific solution or particular solution to this non-exact differential equation. I hope you get that. Please play over the video and I know you'll get a concept. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification bell so that if I post a video, you'll be the first to receive it. Please keep your comments coming. Your comments keeps me going. Until we meet again. Bye-bye.